Mercedes AMG will attempt to break the Mount Panorama GT lap record this weekend with an unrestricted and heavily modified GT3 car. And who better to ask about that car than reigning IGTC champion, three-time Bathurst winner, and the driver who's going to attempt to break that lap record, Jules Goonon. Jules, um, obviously this is very different to the regular GT3 that you're driving with, Sun Energy 1, this weekend. Let's start by just giving everyone a feel for how those two cars do differ. Well, first of all, it was an idea from Mercedes AMG to celebrate the 130 years of motorsport to, to start doing uh, some nice record around the world. And uh, what a better place to, to do it in Mont Panorama uh, with, with this car. As you said, it has the base from a GT3. So obviously uh, inside and also when I drive it, you can really have similarities to my Sun Energy 1 car. But uh, the rest is pretty crazy. <laughs> it's really quick. Today we did a few laps already and in the mountain it was unbelievable. We will go through the differences, but uh, I think the fans around the track are really enjoying. I hope they do as much as I do, because in the car it's fantastic. Yeah, we had a look at it earlier on. It really is incredible on track, this thing. Right, let's have a quick look at the close-ups then of how this car is different to the GT3, because if you see it from a distance, maybe there's a few things you recognise, but there's a lot of detail in this car that is different to the regular GT3. Right, Jules, let's start at the front. Front end is reasonably similar. It's really down the side, isn't it, where things get interesting? Yeah, exactly. So the front grille and the, the whole splitter is quite the same. There is a bit of modification under and on the floor of the splitter to help for the, the airflow under the car. But it's pretty much the same, as you said. It's uh, the base from the GT3. The first modification you can see is on the hair from the tire. The hair intake, the, the one that removes sorry, the hair, you can see there is a bit more gurney, it's called, there to try to improve the, the downforce of the car and obviously the first big major changes comes right there. It's the carbon brakes. This is forbidden in GT3. This comes straight from DTM times, LMP1 times and all the knowledge from IMG of the carbon brakes. Those brakes close to over a thousand degrees on track. It's The deceleration is pretty unbelievable. And you can see also a different design of the rim uh, made to support the load because the car brings much more load, much more downforce. So you need also we needed also to change the, the rims. Then we come on the side, you can see the side skirt of the car is much wider than a normal GT3, which makes an underfloor which is wider, also to produce more downforce. And um, right on the top of it, you can see that the exhaust is a straight pipe. So I'm sure, Tom, you have noticed it today. Very loud. <laughs> I'm still hearing it in my ears, even if I stopped driving two hours ago. But for me, it's just fantastic. When you hear a V8 of 6.2 liters straight pipe having such a noise, it's and no air restrictor uh, on this car either, uh, unlike exactly, GT3. Exactly, exactly. This I was going to go on it. So compared to GT3, you know, you have the balance of performance. So to make all the car compete on a level playing field, we have different ways to do it. So for the guys that are newcomers to GT, uh, SRO or the balance of performance will act first of all on the power with the restriction of the hair coming into the engine for the power, the weight of the car inside with the ballast and also the downforce. How do they do that? They do a minimum ride height at the front and in the rear that we cannot go lower to produce more downforce, which we can in this car. So um, yeah, to finish off of the V8, I'm sure in 20 years, 50 years, I will still remember going close to the wall in the mountain with that V8 is just phenomenal. Another aero, uh, let's say a little upgrade is the mirror coming straight from good old DTM days. Uh, as you can see, there is two or three mini wings on it, which helps to direct the airflow towards the rear wing, which will come later on, and also produce a bit more downforce. Um, I have to say it's a really nice little part of the car. So, so I really like it. Also a bit of different cooling on the rear, uh, a bit more gunny again here. So there's a kind of small modification all around the car. It's very small details. So as you say, it's good we, we can show it up close. Um, but the biggest detail, let's be honest, is that rear wing and the DRS that comes from the Class 1 DTM regulations and obviously Formula 1 as well. Would you just give us uh, an indication of how that works? Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to turn the main switch on, first of all, and the ignition. So there is some small modification inside the car also that will be released later on. But um, the DRS is a pretty special thing. The first time I tried it, when we tested the car in, in Europe, I, was, I put the DRS on and suddenly the car changed massively and we gained a lot of top speed. We reached 329 km per hour in Spain, so it was pretty special. And you will see it's also very nice to see. So in the rear, as you mentioned, it's the same as the class one. So I'm going to press the button and then you will see it going up. 
So that's the low drag version, so it will help in the straight, first of all, for two things. In a GT3, when you run with a very high wing in the rear, let's say 9 degrees, you will hurt yourself in the straight. For the beginners, once again, you can try it in the highway, not when you're driving, but when you're on the side. You open your window, you put your hand, let's say like this, at 130 kph. You will feel that your hand is getting a lot of air pushing through it. But if you put it flat, you will feel that there is very low resistance from the hair. And that's basically what we are doing right now. And uh, that's giving us a lot more top speed. And then when you come either off the throttle or braking, or I can deactivate it myself, it's gonna happen like this. And back to normal. So that's pretty special. I have to say maybe it's an idea for the GT3 in the future to give a DRS for the race, to, for more overtake. But I have to say we are pretty lucky in GT, there's a lot of overtake on track. So um, that's pretty much it from the well, car. One, one thing we did forget to mention, obviously BOP, your race car has got about 520 bhp this weekend. This has got 650. So for all the trick modifications on it, it's a lot more powerful as well. And with all that in mind, obviously you've cut some laps today. Lap records currently held by the Brabham BT62 from 2019. That's a 158.68. What are your chances of breaking that tomorrow? Well, we'll see. Uh, I will have to, to zip my suit very tight, <laughs> put my belt tight and, uh, and give it a big shot. But uh, today the lab were very promising. We have to take in consideration the Brabham is 900 kilo. Uh, here we are definitely much higher and they had a lot of power. So it's a, it's a hard record to, to beat, but uh, here I am. I'm really happy. For me, it's not that easy because when I'm switch fit in, switching in between cars, there's a big grip and uh, power difference. So I always need to adapt, but tomorrow morning we have a good slot. I just hope the weather will be great and cold. That's what you need like this morning and uh, cross finger, I can do something pretty cool with this car. Absolutely. Well, we wish him best of luck, don't we? Uh, that lap, those attempts actually are going to be part of the live stream on Saturday. So make sure you're watching SRO's GT World and Bathurst 12 Hour on YouTube.